So I'm Manny Fernandez, a Silicon Valley Angel Investor, and I'm so excited to be here. You know, uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur, angel investor, founder of SF Angels Group, a 32-member group. And I'm also an investor shark on CNBC, Make Me a Millionaire Inventor. My most recent success was TaskRabbit, one of our companies we funded, got acquired by IKEA. But I wanted to say, it's been a very long journey. It's been a really long journey to get here. And I remember, you know, working out of my home many years ago, having the ups and downs of the business and struggling to raise money and just it was hard. So I've been in everyone's shoes. But I persevered and I'm gonna talk about some things that I think are helpful to all of us. Um, I'm fortunate that the media covered me at least 90 times in mainstream articles and TV. They keep asking me information and it really boils down to providing information to take people that are kind of confused and provide them clarity. So what I'm gonna do with my talk is help you to get more clear on how you can raise the money that you want for your dreams if you allow me to do so. So I want you guys to focus and listen to my words, because in a moment I'm gonna take you on a journey, the journey on the psychology of raising money. This is gonna to be told by a story of two different entrepreneurs. One is John and the other one is Larry. See, John wanted to raise money and he wanted to raise a million dollars and he wrote it down on paper and he put a deadline on it. I'm gonna raise a million dollars and I'm gonna do it in 60 days. And then he visualized it in his mind. He took some time and he saw it in his mind. Not if maybe it'll work out, he did it as it was already done. He saw it in his mind. He saw the people he would hire. He saw him moving into the, the, an office. He saw the sales increasing, his business growing. He saw it already as it was done. And then he did something important. He took action. He started talking to investors. On the other side, you have Larry. Larry wanted to raise money. And he started talking to investors. Now both of them, just like any entrepreneur, they got rejected and they got the setbacks from investors, but both did something completely different. See, John took some time out and where he was uninterrupted for about 10 minutes, focused on the goal that he wanted. He kept replaying in his mind that million dollars in a business bank account who he was going to hire, the office he was going to have, the clients, and that successful exit down the road. He kept seeing it in his mind like his own movie. He started to control his own mind. And at the end, he said, I raised a million dollars. He came up with a statement. And then he went back out there, pumped up, and started talking to investors again, having a little bit more success. Larry, on the other hand, he said, well, I guess this must be my business. I'm going to try it again. So he went out there and tried it again. John was having great success. He was getting investors meetings and they were really optimistic and talking with him. But it didn't happen fast enough for John. John started to worry a little bit as we all have in our life. That fear started to grow. As well, Larry, he had the same fear and that fear started to grow. Larry, just allow that fear to grow. He started to worry. He started to get sad. Maybe he wasn't good enough. Maybe it was a startup. Maybe it was the market. Maybe it was a damn competition. Maybe it was Google. Maybe it's the government. It's something's wrong. I can't believe this is happening, he says. Everywhere he looks around, he saw all the reasons why he just couldn't raise the money. And he just got greater and greater into fear and worry really sad. 
But John, on the other hand, John said, you know what? I'm going to go back to when I first started. I'm going to grab this piece of paper. As they say in a old uh, Asian proverb, that palest ink is stronger than the retent most retentive memory. So he looked at that ink and reminded himself, he started playing in his mind the goal of him raising that million dollars. The feeling and excitement of having that million dollars. The belief that he saw in his mind of when he's going to talk to an investor, he's going to present it, but he's going to present it with great belief. And he can imagine them saying yes, because he's, he's delivering such confidence and aura, and the investor's saying, that's a winner. That's the guy I want to back. And the moment worry started to enter his mind, just like it enters everyone else's mind, he decided to change it like a channel on the TV. In the beginning, it was hard. You know, he's got worry, he started getting depressed, and he said, you know what, I'm going to take my thoughts and I'm going to control it. I'm going to control it, goddammit. I raised a million dollars. I see it in my mind. This is exactly what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. This is the staff, this is the office, this is the sales. He got upset with himself. He created emotion and feelings. He woke up in the morning, he imagined it. He went to sleep and imagined it. He controlled his mind instead of his mind controlling him. Again, he controlled his mind instead of his mind controlling him. Larry on the other side, well, Larry is kind of like, you know, the stock market, ups and downs, he has good days, bad days, good hours, bad hours, because his thoughts were everywhere. He never really learned on how to control his own mind by planting his thoughts that he wanted to grow. And he never even got rid of the worry that he had in his mind. And then he started contacting less investors because, you know, he's really busy. But he was really busy in his own mind of all the worry that he had. So his results were really starting to get poor. And then he started to hang around people that really thought the same way. And then they started talking about, yeah, it's the government, it's the politics, it's this and that, and not having any real success. But he's working on it. He's working on his pitch. He goes to pitch events, he talks to investors, but somehow he just can't figure it out. On the other hand, you have John, and John is always sometimes excited, and sometimes he has that setback, but again, he went into a quiet spot and started to imagine in his mind very carefully what he wanted. It was hard in the beginning, but he kept working on that mental muscle throughout. And he worked on that mental muscle and saw exactly what he wanted. When he interacted with investors, the answers were coming up easier than ever before. When the investors asked him questions, the answers came out easier and smoother than ever before. Investors were writing checks like he was a magnet, but money was coming to him. Now John, John was starting to, you know, get a little depressed. He would go out, he went out and did a little cocktail hour. He heard about this, if you believe it, and write down the goal, but why do that? Because he tried that once, didn't work. He tried it once, didn't work. John tried it multiple times, and he kept working on it. So at the end of about 60 days, he re John received all the funding he wanted, and more funding than he had wanted. It was called overfunded. And when Larry heard about it, Larry said, uh, he was just lucky. Now, the good thing about Larry, he didn't become homeless. He ended up working for John with the new funding. So you have a story of an entrepreneur and a story of an employee. It's how we use our brains. So to sum it up in three simple patterns, number one, when we decide to create the funding, clearly decide what we want, write it down with the date and believe in it in advance. See it in your mind, say, I'm doing it, this is what I'm doing. And then, second, when you're going out and talking with investors, use the imagination in your mind. All the great buildings here in Shanghai, all the great businesses were always created initially with what they saw in their mind before anyone else saw it. And third, he used the suggestion of self-talk that he did the goal in advance. He saw it in advance 
And he knew that the mind was very similar to, say, a tire on a bike with a small hole. This tire would run out of air. But he knew that with saying I raised a million dollars, with feeling and consistently doing it, was very similar to pumping up his motivation and keeping him strong so he can use that enthusiasm to attract the money from the investors. Now, I have a gift for you guys. We're doing a, a little audio thing I'm releasing that will we'll have a little gift for you guys. Um, we're, we're releasing an, an audio that can help you get through stories with my voice and allowing you to, at no cost to kind of go through the stories and, and learn how to raise the money. It's all within our, between our two ears. And what I suggest you guys do is connect with me on WeChat to get a free copy or send me an email at Manny Fernandez, I mean Manny at DreamFunded. Because nothing in this world was ever accomplished without inspiration. And I hope I can be an inspiration to you all. I, it was a hard road, but I persevered, and you guys can all do it today. Now, we know it's Friday the 13th, and remember, everything in our mind only has meaning based on the meaning we give it. So let's create our own meaning. Thank you so very much. I'm Andy Fernandez.